please. I'm too short for this mic. It is so great to be here with all of you. It's such a treat for me to be among so many friends, some of them old and some of them brand new, to, to celebrate something um, so precious. Now, as marriage, I, um, I learned a long time, I'm gonna speak very briefly. Some of you who know me well know I can go on and on if encouraged, but um, I learned a long time ago not to get in the way of a good party, and the band's going to be back playing some great praise and worship music, uh, especially when that party is followed not only by a, a marriage ceremony, a vow renewal ceremony, but also by ice cream. So let, <laughs> let me tell you why I'm here and why I think so many of us are here. For those of you who are here because your own marriage is such a wonderful thing to celebrate, we all want to celebrate that with you here today. For those of you, by the way, I just feel I've been married now, it'll be 17 years in January. Uh, for those, and this isn't personal, my husband's not here, but uh, for those of you who are here because your marriage is only so-so, but you still think marriage is a really important thing and you're here to celebrate that, let's hear it for those people too, right? <laughs> about marriage. There's something special about the idea of bringing together the two great halves of humanity, male and female, in part so that children can know and be known by and love and be loved by their mother and father, right? Right. And um, I'm a Christian. I, those of you who are not Christian, welcome to everyone who's here. But um, as a Christian, I want to say that we all know that there are, there are particular reasons that God has laid out about marriage. But what I do mostly and what I'm struck by and what I want to share with you today is to talk about some of the ways that marriage matters um, that are universal to the human race, right? There's a sense in which, and I'm not a theologian, so if I say something that's wrong, I hope all the pastors here will go and correct me. But there's some sense in which marriage is almost a natural sacrament. Everywhere you go around the globe, there's something called marriage, okay? For, for thousands of years, in virtually every known human society, there's something called marriage. And it's always about, it, it, you know, marriage is a universal human idea, it has a certain basic shape. It's always, it's a sexual union, it's not some other kind of union between a man and a woman, or at least one man and one woman, one woman because you know, a bunch of small tribes believe in polygamy, but between male and female, in which the rights and responsibilities of the husband and wife towards each other and towards any children that come out of their union are publicly defined and supported. And we don't try to just leave it up to teenagers in love to work out all on their own what this whole big phenomenon of human experience means, right? That, that's a recipe for disaster, as, as some of us have found out. The, um, the heart of, now there aren't that many human universals, okay? What is it about human beings that leads people in every no, virtually every known human society to again and again come up with this marriage idea, to surround it with special attention and focus, to treat it as something sacred and or precious, something that needs to be protected and sustained, something that we hold out as a special ideal, not the only ideal, but the special ideal, for you, particularly for the next generation. And um, I think marriage is a hum universal human institution that's gonna be that, that has these deep roots in three basic ideas that are true about human beings everywhere. The first is that the overwhelming majority of us are attracted to the opposite sex. And that sex, sex those relationships give rise to children, right? This, a good thing, babies are a good thing. The second truth is that society needs babies. Reproduction is optional for the individual. Not every single human being has to do it. But only those human societies that recognize how precious this thing is and how much it needs to be protected actually survive over the long haul. And the third idea on which marriage is based is that children need a father as well as a mother. 
Um, no, they don't need this the way they need oxygen, but in a serious and deep way, the human heart longs, children long to know that the two people who made them, the two great principles of humanity, male and female, have come together, that they are conceived in love and welcomed by their mother and father. And that is what marriage, the word marriage means and what it stands for. Um, we know that it's not always the case in every individual life. And, but it's precisely because it's as an ideal it's so important and as a reality it takes such energy and commitment that we think it's important to continue to aspire to protect this ideal. At its deepest level, this thing called marriage, what does it mean? It means, it stands for the reality that our bodies have meaning. That it's not an accident that we're born male and female. That these, that, uh, that the deepest yearnings of our hearts and even of our bodies have a purpose. They call us out of ourself and towards each other and towards the children who represent the future of this state and this country. A baby, as you know, is God's opinion that the world should go on, right? And so, it's, I thank you today. This is not, uh, this is a day to come together around what we're for, to celebrate the, this aspiration and this yearning and this longing is still very real, and to celebrate with those couples who not only were daring enough to make a vow of irrevocable love to each other once, but are here today to stand before all of us again and say, I will love you for the rest of my life in sickness and in health until death do us part. Thank you very much and God bless you all.